Hey, what's up, guys? Auto Fanatic. So this is the three-year ownership video of my 2018 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to give you guys a hell of a lot of information, whether you are planning to own one of these cars or you recently just acquired one. I'm going to discuss the ownership experience as far as what it costs to own this car over the course of three years. I'm going to discuss how I got the car back and finally repaired. I'm gonna go over all the aftermarket stuff that I did, including the cost. And I'm also gonna discuss all the warranty work that was done on this car in the last three years. So I'm just out for a drive right now. You can tell it's a little loud in here. This is with the new Resonator Delete kit that we're now selling on our website. And I've uh, been shipping these things all over the world. And there's also another product that's in the car as well that I did not post a video on that yet, but I will show you guys exactly what that's all about. And I'm also gonna discuss a little bit about the way the car is currently set up because there's some different modifications done to this car. In particular, the suspension is totally different than it was prior. So I'm gonna just finish this drive. I'm gonna pull over in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get out. I'm gonna show you the condition of the car. I'm gonna talk to you about everything. So if anybody out there that follows this content, follows this channel, I may have persuaded you guys to buy this car. Some of you guys are having headaches you know, getting these cars fixed no matter where you are in the United States or outside the United States. But this video should be really good information for you guys and you can continue enjoying these cars. And I'm also gonna discuss what is the next car? What will replace this car? Because there's really not a lot of options right now because of the car shortages and there's not a lot of cars that really piqued my interest that I could actually obtain. So stay tuned, we're gonna get this video going in a couple of moments. All right guys, just pulled over. So like I said, the car's a little bit loud when, you're, when I'm on the highway and of course I'm always in race mode. So this video is gonna be really important because I've been through hell with this car. Some of you guys that watch my channel, you I get emails from all over the world. A lot of people are having issues with mechanical issues and the dealership cannot fix your cars. So this video might be long, but it's gonna be packed with information. Whether you're a current owner, or you're seeking to become an owner of an Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. So just wanna show you guys wear and tear of the interior is pretty well. I mean, the leather seat, I discussed this in the two-year video, still has some creases, but in the past uh, year, this car has not been used very, very much because it was in the shop for several months and I finally got it back and now I'm driving it every day. So also my custom steering wheel, I ended up selling it because I didn't think I was gonna be keeping this car. So I pulled everything off the car and I had to put it back to stock to get it fixed. That was the protocol. So I sold off the lowering springs, the wheels and tires, the exhaust, all the carbon fiber, everything. And then once I had some confidence that I was gonna get the car back and fully repaired, then I had to go buy everything new again. So this is a steering wheel that a buddy of mine loaned me and I have another steering wheel in the garage that I'm gonna start cutting apart and doing another custom job as well. So you can see I got all the Koshi carbon fiber, uh, the vents, the instrument cluster, all of that. This of course is gonna be changed and everything else is all stocked. This is the carbon fiber Sparco bucket seats, which I really think if you don't get this car with these seats, you're really missing out on the experience. So see the leather, everything is wear and tear is perfectly fine. That's just because I'm really a fanatic taking care of my cars. So we'll go into the back area. You can see everything is clean. Nobody really ever sits back here, but I do load up the back of the car with boxes and all kinds of crap. But for the video today, I actually vacuumed the car out last night and I cleaned off the leather and the Alcantara. Those are just some pages that I'm gonna be discussing all the cost of ownership in this video um, going forward. So here's the situation. Now, if you guys follow the content from the very first video I did three years ago on this car, the way I acquired it, it was totally a whim. I was looking for another daily driver. I had to retire the Shelby GT350 that I was driving daily. It was just getting a little too rough around here to be driving that car daily. So this car just fell into my lap, uh, basically, when these cars came out, i never forget this. I went to go road test one at the dealership in Greenwich, Connecticut, and it was a competition red 2017. And as soon as we pull it out of the dealership, the power seat was going up and down, up and down. It was going bonkers with the memory. Something was wrong. Then we switched to DNA modes. Then the dashboard blocked out. That wasn't working. And then the excuse from the salesman at the time was a young kid. He didn't really know much about the car. He's like, oh no, this is just a pre-production model that we just have early so you can test drive it. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, as soon as I started seeing some electrical glitches, I got really, really nervous about the car. And then I kind of dismissed it. And it was on my radar, but I was always like scared because the dealer network, and I'm gonna discuss the issues with the dealer network, not only in the United States, but it's Canada and it's worldwide, because I'm gonna tell you now, it's really a, a shame because this is a very 
special car. This has a lot of engineering from some of the best people at Ferrari. It was also designed in the Formula One wind tunnel for Ferrari. This car is probably never ever gonna be made again as far as in the future of what's gonna be going on with the automotive industry. So to get one of these cars, whether a 2017 up to a 2021, I tell you right now, this is gonna be your only chance to get it because I don't think that they're ever gonna have the same team from Ferrari go and engineer a specialty car. I mean, this car had to be the breadwinner for the brand to bring it back to the United States after being absent for so many years. Now, according to what's going on now with FCA, uh, they're gonna run Alfa Romeo into the ground. Unfortunately, that's the reality of what's happening. So the problem is the company is just run by a bunch of bean counters and things are just not going as planned. And that's why I went through absolute hell trying to get this car fixed from day one. So you look at the exterior of the car, the car looks awesome. I have not paint corrected this car since November of 2018. All I do to this car is I use the Auto Fanatic soap. I use the Auto Fanatic 007 ceramic on it now. I do mostly touchless washes. I do some contact washes, of course, during the winter. You can see the reflections. The paint looks absolutely incredible. Now, being that the car was jockeyed around for months from dealership to dealership, flatbed to flatbed, uh, there are some issues in the paint that I have to address. Now, number one, I actually did it recently. It looks like they slid boxes, uh, most likely because the car was sitting for so long waiting for parts. They probably had boxes on the, on the trunk lid and it looks like they slid it across. So I had to polish that out with the Flex 3401. That's sorted out. Uh, I got to do some stuff on the hood and also on the roof of the car. But like I said, it's not to the point where it's super, super bad right now. Usually I'm going to do a winter prep video and then I'll probably take you guys along for a ride on how I'm going to prep this car, you know, to go forward. Now, we also did the Koshi carbon fiber grill. That's brand new. I took the old one off. I broke it. Uh, I actually broke the actual factory OEM surround. I had to replace that as well. Brand new Technigo wheels. These are the Forge Technigo wheels. These are also done. You can see that those are in gloss black now. So the set that I had prior was matte black. I decided to do gloss black and they are a lot easier to clean. Got the centerline titanium stud kit. You can see that there. Showed you guys a video on that. Also have auto fanatic wheel spacers, except this time around, I anodized them in black and I have, I think, one or two sets available in the auto fanatic web shop. So everything else is pretty much the same. I got the carbon fiber mirror caps. Those are new, um, new tires. I'm on Pirelli courses now. Now I was trying to do the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, except the rear tires have been on back order since April of 2021. There's shortages all over the board. So you can't get a lot of stuff for the car. Now, if you look carefully at the car, the way it's sitting, the car sits a little bit lower in the front and a little bit lower in the rear versus the STKW lowering springs. Now, the reason for that is this car is currently on the KW DDC adaptive coilover kit. I'm gonna do a separate video on that soon and I'm gonna discuss the particulars and stuff like that, but I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, it was a complaint that I had with this car from day one. As soon as you do the lowering springs, the factory shock tuning just doesn't really work well on the earlier cars. Now on the Alfa Rosso 21 that I sold, that worked phenomenal with the lowering springs. It's like a totally different car altogether. So I was actually hoping that this is gonna be similar to the 21 with the shock tuning and the DDC kit, but it's, it's close, but it's not. I still wish it was gonna be a little bit firmer, but I'm gonna tell you right now, the KW DDC kit cost me four grand. I ordered it in April. I ended up getting it in July. I got the car back in August. Okay, so that's the timeline of what's going on right now. The kit cost me 3,400 bucks, and then I had to pay about four or 500 bucks in shipping to get it here expedited because I was so anxious and impatient from waiting. So I paid FedEx to get a huge 60 pound box overnighted from Germany. So on the car, it's phenomenal. No longer do I bottom out in the front. No longer do I feel that squishy bounce in the front. It just totally transformed the car. Now in the, uh, the other DNA modes, which I don't really use, it's a little bit too soft for my needs, but just to let you guys know, the DNA modes and the active dampening still functions perfectly. There's no fault codes whatsoever. Everything is good to go. Now, a lot of you guys are probably asking like, hey, what the hell went wrong with your car and how did you get it back? And that's what I'm gonna talk about now. So let me, before we get started, the most important thing that I wanna talk about here is probably was one of the hardest things for the dealership to diagnose. And that was an electrical problem. Oh, look, the hood actually works now. Remember how many times you guys pop these things up and they don't work. So there's the heart of the beast, a 90 degree 2.9 liter bi-turbo V6 that of course was developed by the guys of Ferrari. So here's the situation. Now, if you guys watched my video when I was having all these problems with this car, there was one issue where I was, it smelled like the car was going on fire. It smelled like an electrical fire, it smelled like a coolant fire. There was all smoke coming from this immediate area. After they pulled the car apart, 
the radiator had a crack in it, so they replaced the radiator. This seems to be a very common problem on all the Alfa Romeos, and actually my Stelvio is having the same issue right now that we're going to have to try to get that in as soon as possible. So the entire nose of the car was pulled off this car. Everything in the engine bay was dismantled. That's where the problem comes in. Now, the car was at one dealership. They dismantled the engine bay to do spark plugs, and they did the fuel pump. Okay, and I'm going to discuss that more when I get inside the car. When they pull the car apart, they broke all kinds of stuff. Okay, so there was a, a wiring harness here that was broken. They fixed that because I broke down again. I had to get a tow. Now, one of the hardest things to fix and to diagnose, there was a wiring harness. I don't know. It, I think it's probably on this side. It's probably this one here. Okay, yeah, most likely this one here because they had to pull the bumper off. So there was a wiring harness that goes, it goes to the headlamps and it goes to the back of the dash. It's actually connected to the instrument panel and somewhere at the cowl area over there. Now, of course, you remember the cowl was all taken apart to fix the water intrusion problem that I had where the HVAC system lies right over here. Apparently, the first time around, they didn't seal it right and they didn't do it properly. So that had to get done over again. Uh, they did some other stuff with drainage and, and whatever, but what ended up happening, there was a short in this electrical harness, some sort of a tear. Now, I don't know if that tear happened over time. I don't know if that tear happened from rough, sloppy mechanics that were pulling the car apart the first time around. But I'm going to tell you right now that whoever damaged this wiring harness, they taped it up in such a way that it took them weeks upon weeks to try to rip this apart and figure out what it was. So that was all replaced. And after that's been done, the car has been absolutely awesome. Uh, another thing that they did too, we did the fuel injectors, we did the spark plugs, they did the wiring harness up there. They actually wanted to change another harness behind the engine, okay? And when they told me that the engine and transmission and everything has got to be dropped out of the car, I says, nope, give me the car back, that's it, I'm tired of waiting, the car's been down for three months, I want my car back, that was it. So fortunately, the car I've driven about 1,400 miles, the car's been absolutely great. There's no issues with the water. There's no check engine lights. My alarm's not going off anymore. No fuel pump issues, no service throttle body, none of that stuff. The car has been bulletproof. In the rear of the car, they replaced the battery. The, car, the car's battery was re replaced two times. I'm gonna document and I'm gonna tell you guys the dates of the battery replacements and specifically touch upon why the secondary time was replaced. Things actually worked in my favor. So, like I said, there's not much to talk about the exterior. The car's the same. Uh, the car's still modified. I absolutely love it. If a lot of people have been asking me, oh, why don't you tune it? I'll tell you right now, I will never, ever attempt to tune these ECUs in this car because of the dealer support. And I'm going to talk about more of that when I get inside the car. And I'm going to show you guys exactly the list of actually what was done and the cost of ownership of the 2018 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. All right, guys. So I'm just going to get in the passenger compartment uh, just to talk to you about the full. I have a sheet here printed out of all the stuff that I want to talk about. But before we do that, just want to show you guys a quick little teaser. This is a new Auto Fanatic. Alfa Romeo exclusive product for a fire extinguisher mount kit. Okay, so we sell these on the Autofanatic web shop. I didn't do a full video yet. I started doing a video and I just never posted it, but you guys could see it there. It mounts on the Sparco seats and also the power seats. It doesn't interfere where you're going to have the comfort issue if your wife or girlfriend gets in and the thing is bumping the back of their leg. Uh, super convenient. And to be honest with you, after the car was smoking months ago, I was scared of an electrical fire. I said this was probably one of the smartest things and just gives me a little bit of peace of mind to keep this in the car. So definitely uh, food for thought. We ship these things all over the world. You could actually order them on the Autofanatic website. So uh, as I discuss all the issues that and gone on with the car, I'm going to actually put screenshots up so you guys could actually get a clearer visualization of exactly what I'm talking about. And we're going to go through the timeline. So the timeline is going to come down to I took delivery of the car in October of 2018. I believe it was October 12th of 2018. The reason I know it was the same day that I launched the Auto Fanatic web store. We're going to start with the three year cost of ownership. Now, what I mean by that is wear and tear and generalized maintenance. Now, if you guys follow my channel, I do all the maintenance work myself. The stuff is easy to do. I show you guys DIY. I explain to you the tools. If you're not confident to do it yourself, you could go to any local shop and do this stuff much more affordably than going to the dealer. So we're, as far as maintenance goes, we're going to start with that. Oil changes with the OEM filter, $145. That's exactly what it cost me to buy the case of oil and to buy the OEM oil filter. And also, like I said, depending on sometimes I suck out the oil, sometimes I'll drain it out from the bottom. It really depends. Now, 
$145 and I do two oil changes per year. So now I did five oil changes on the car since new. The sixth oil change I'm gonna be doing in about a week or two as soon as the oil and the filter shows up. So that's been ordered. So that's relatively inexpensive. Now, if you go to the dealer, it's definitely gonna cost you more than that. Uh, that's where it could kind of you know add up. Now, the HVAC cabin filter. I replaced it in the second, the two and a half years of ownership. I, I believe I did a video on the auto finance channel. You got to go back and check the date when I posted that. That cost me only $60. It was a little bit of a bitch to get the filter in, but it's done. I also replaced the OEM paper air filter for the air intake. I put a BMC and then I put a Sprint filter. I sold one. I bought the other one. So that was $135 and that was installed when the car was new. Now, another wear and tear item. Uh, replacement tires. Now, my car is lowered. I have a custom alignment. I have much more negative camber, and I drive the car spiritedly all the time. Uh, so the, the summer tire replacement is $1,400 per set. So far, two sets of complete sets of tires have been installed. Now, the tires have been installed not just because of wear and tear to the outside edges or the limits and had punctures by the sidewall, which cannot be repaired. So I just replaced, instead of replacing one tire, I replaced two, and then I replaced four, and kind of you know go through that little bit right there. Uh, wheel alignments. Since this car is custom aligned, I spent a considerable amount of time and money with various friends of mine uh, doing custom alignments. We did six wheel alignments in three years, all tweaking the toe and the camber and, and everything else because this car is so reactive I really wanted to dial it in to a point where I was gonna be really, really comfortable pushing it hard. So each one of those alignments was about 300 bucks. So you know, 1800 bucks they spent on alignments, okay? There really isn't a lot of wear and tear in this car. I haven't even changed my windshield wiper blades, which I think I'm gonna to have to do before the winter, but that's pretty much what it costs. We're gonna go now to the next list is the aftermarket parts that I installed and tested, okay? So now this is gonna be a lot of the content that I showed you in the videos on the Auto Fanatic channel for three years. And some of the stuff I may have not done videos on because I either hated it and then I took it off and I sold it. So the first step, and you guys know how important this was with the brake by wire, was trying to get the brake system to work better. So the first thing I did, aftermarket and OEM brake rotors and various brake pads were tested. I spent about $5,500 on rotors from Tarox, brake discs from every company you could think of, between the discs, the OEM stuff, the pads, that cost me almost six grand, but that was done for personal testing and, and personal learning on this platform and on this car. And then I took that information and I created content and I shared it with all the people around the world. So it became beneficial. So all of you guys reaped the benefits of me doing that. And that's really why I enjoy buying these cars and doing the testing and sharing it along the way. Now we did the centerline X pipe, that was the first exhaust mod I did. That was $800. That was awesome. It's still one of the best uh, mods you're going to do for the money. Uh, it definitely feels great. Sounds really good. Uh, no issues with that. Now, a lot of misconceptions that a lot of fans and people that watch this channel keep doing, they go to a local exhaust shop and they put in a generic, generic X pipe. And they say, oh, Phil, the car doesn't sound like your car. It lost all the, all the tone and the pops and bangs. That's because... The X-Pipe that Centerline Alpha is selling was designed specifically to enhance what was already there. Just throwing a generic X-Pipe under the car, e theoretically, you think it's going to do the same thing, and it's, it's really not. X-Pipes are not created equally. End of story. We're not going to get into that. Uh, I also bought, uh, we had the Stradali exhaust system. That was $3,000. It was a little bit too much for me and had some clearance issues with all the bumps. So that came off the car and that was given over to Jerry. You guys saw the videos. Uh, you follow him on Instagram. He's got that exhaust and he loves it. That was That's actually probably the, <clears throat> one of the best exhausts you're going to get as far as building power. Okay. A lot of exhaust systems are all about tone and the brand and all of that. But as far as building power, this is the only one in the market that's got a full three inch from the front to back with a complete muffler bypass when you open and close the valves. Uh, I also bought a Remus exhaust. That was about $4,000. I had it on the car for a couple of days. I completely ripped it off. I didn't like the tone. It was too boomy, too much drone. That was out. So that was $4,000. Then I did the KWST lowering springs. Uh, originally, when I bought those, I paid full retail. I paid $399 for those. I did the Ideal Race rear upper control arms. I did that in the second year of ownership because with the lowering springs, I had like 2.3 degrees negative rear camber, and on this car with the IRS and the way the car gets tail happy with the torque and the way it builds up power, 
it was just a little sketchy, okay? After I put the Ideal Race upper control arms in, the sketchiness was totally removed and the confidence level went up 50% in the car. Now, I no longer have those adjustable arms in the car because I, I have a new suspension in the car and I'm still testing it how it is right now and keeping it at a neutral state. So far, the car feels phenomenal, which means that a lot of the sketchiness that I was just complaining about with the handling and the grip most likely was coming from the shock tuning not being appropriate for the lowering springs and the spring rates in the car. Now with the KWDDC kit, those springs and those shocks were designed as a system. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the $4,000 it cost me, uh, if I could do it all over again, I would, do, I would spend $8,000 uh, just to get this upgrade. Now, the Koshi carbon fiber interior and exterior upgrades, uh, $2,800. That's all the stuff on the dash, on the exterior. That's pretty much, you know, the run of the mill. And that's only if you really want to do that stuff. You don't have to do it. Some cars, you can get the carbon pack, but my car was in early 2018, and that wasn't an option at the time. Titanium wheel stud kit from Centerline Alpha. I paid $359 for that. The custom Auto Fanatic wheel spacers, $399. The Auto Fanatic Rock Guard kit, $99. I sell these things around the world. They really, really protect the rocker panels and the side of the car from stone chips. I don't care if you have PPF, but the front tires, especially if you're running courses or Pilot Sport Cup 2s, when you're barreling this car fast in and out of turns and those front wheels are kicking up those rocks, you're going to destroy your paint quick. And for a simple $99, it really, really helps a lot. Uh, powder coating the wheels, uh, $1,600. That was the original set of Technicos. I had those done twice, so it cost me $1,600. The Resonator Delete Kit that's currently on the car now, $300. KW DDC coilover kit, $4,000. That's including the cost of shipping, uh, overnight shipping. Currently, the car has the Stelvio front sway bar end links, about $270 with all new hardware. I also have a winter set of wheels and tires, which are the OEM five holes with the Michelin Pilot Alpins, TPMS sensors, and brand new lug nuts. That was about $3,800. I already went through three seasons and there is still plenty of life left. There's no issues with the wheels and tires. Uh, the brand new Forge Technical wheels that are currently on the car are $5,000. Okay, so this is pretty much gonna give you a gist of how much money I spent and what I put into this car versus testing and setting the car up exactly the way I wanted it. So now, the most important part of this video, we're gonna talk about warranty work. Okay, guys, this is the important part of this video. And I think the one that's going to mean the most to anybody that owns this car and is having issues with the car or fears owning this car. Now, some of the warranty work that I'm going to discuss with you today was done accidentally because of poor, rough, negligent technicians. Some of it was done because of actual faults. Now, we're going to go through the dates. All the dates are listed chronologically. I'm going to post a screenshot of this on the screen of this video so you guys could see it in detail exactly what I went through going forward. So the very first warranty item that was replaced, the car was delivered October of 2018. And the first issue was the screen on the dash had a lamination crack in it. That was the very first issue that was done to the car. I brought it to my local dealer right when they just opened up the dealership. I met with the service guy. He was super cool. He goes, no problem. We'll get the VIN number. We order it up and get it in the car. So I brought the, uh, the car in about a week or so later uh, to get that done when the part came in. They also replaced the screen on the dash. That went successfully. However, the technician broke other items. So the dashboard vents right over here, this was replaced as well. They cracked it and broke the tabs. The instrument cluster housing over there was broken and was falling off the dash. That was also negligent technicians. Okay, so that was done under warranty and that was done October of 2018. Now, I was having the issue where the alarm was going crazy and everybody knows about that where it kept sensing breaking attempt or was going off in the middle of the night. So in November of 2018, they replaced the map light housing right above over here. I'll just show you that real quick. So they replaced that thing there, which apparently has the proximity shock sensor for the alarm system, okay? Now, everything was going good. The car was going great, had no issues. That was just little stupid nuances, cosmetics of the screen being cracked, and then the technician broke all of the crap. And then, of course, the overhead light for the alarm sensor. Now, in February of 2020, 
This was one of the very last things that was done to the car before the world shut down. As we all know, it happened uh, the month after that in March of 2020. They, I was having the issue where, uh, what was going on? There was something going on with the battery. I was getting the battery light indicator on the instrument cluster when I started up in the morning and the start stop wasn't working. And we, <laughs> Jerry and I, we, we were over at Harbor Freight and across the street was the dealership. I was like, you know, what, let me just pop in. And we, we were there on a Saturday and they actually replaced my battery on the Saturday. Now here's the situation. In February of 2020, they just replaced the battery. Okay, and I'm gonna to touch upon this more as I go through this list. Okay, the car was fine. The world gets shut down. Not much going on with the car. I'm not really driving it much. Now, somewhere over the summer of 2020, I'm doing a brake video somewhere up north and the car had a service electronic throttle, stuttered, and shut itself off, okay? I was able to fire the car back up, it would stutter, 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 and then shut itself off. So what did I do? I go to the trunk of the car, I did a battery disconnect, I waited 20 minutes, I call my friends to see if I get the car towed, nobody wanted to go all the way up an hour away to go tow the car, you know, everything was just kind of crazy back then. So I got the car started, the car started in limp mode, and it went into A mode. I couldn't get it any at, at A mode, so I had to slowly cruise all the way back home. Now, car sat for a couple of days, started up, never happened again. Okay, now I start driving the car more over the winter. You know, we have winter now going into 2021. Uh, the car was starting to act a little funky. It was starting to stutter, starting to get service throttle body uh, light constantly on the dashboard. And all of a sudden, I literally almost got into a very, very bad rear end collision where the car shut itself off when I was on the highway. It shut itself off a total of 12 times. I got stuck with this car 12 times because of the next issue that was replaced, which was the electronic fuel pump in the gas tank. And they also replaced the fuel pump module. Now, when the car was acting all kinds of craziness and the car was stuttering and, and, and misfiring and all of that, it also fouled out the spark plugs. Okay, so the car gets flatbedded to the local dealership. They put the fuel pump and they programmed the new module. They replaced the spark plugs, okay? While they did that too, they also corrected, I was getting water intrusion into the cabin where there was a puddle on the passenger side floor. So I made a video, you guys can go on the channel, you can see, kind of see that. So they replaced the HVAC housing and an actuator arm where the flap opens and closes depending on the button that you hit over here, right down here. Uh, that was done, car comes back, broke down again, had to get towed back, then they found another problem wrong with the car. There was some sort of wiring harness underneath the underneath the hood like i showed you and i think they broke it when they ripped the car apart to do the spark plugs brought the car back that was may of 2021 they fixed it the car comes back to my house broke down again goes back there they try something else get the car back 20 minutes later it broke down again when i mean broke down i mean like the car was running and all of a sudden it would just shut off and that's where I got a little bit nervous. I'm like, you know what? I really love this car, but now this is becoming a safety issue. And if I get into an accident, we're gonna have a serious liability issue, okay? That's when I started exploring the idea of getting rid of this car, this particular one, and buying the new one, which I eventually did. If you guys watch the channel, I bought a 2021. So we go back, the car sat at my house for a while, okay? I wasn't driving it. I was driving my Stelvio, I was driving the Shelby, driving all the other cars. And like I said, everybody's life right now, you know, with this whole pandemic thing that's been going on for like 20 months, everybody's life has been different. So I, I don't have to go into Manhattan a couple of times a week. I don't have to go to Long Island. So my life doesn't really revolve in the car like it did prior. Okay. So everybody's lifestyle has changed. I'm not using the car much. So the car has been sitting outside my house and I was just like reluctant to even drive it again. That's really what it was. So one day I was like, you know, what? let me just call this dealership, you know, out of state and see if they're willing to take the car in to fix it. So we made the arrangements to do that. We got the car flatbedded there. And I said, listen, you can keep the car as long as you want. I just bought a 2021. I'm in no rush. I have to decide, am I gonna sell the black car? Is the car gonna go back as a buyback? What am I gonna do? So it, was a whole, it turned out to be a, a huge mess that this car is paid off. And then I go take out a loan for the red car, which I really don't wanna do. I don't like taking loans. I like to own stuff outright. I don't like to live anything in my life with debt. Fortunately, I just like to do it that way. It's not that easy to do, but I like to do it that way. The dealership had the car for the entire month of June, July, and some parts of August. So the car was out of service be between being parked at home 
and being at the dealership for almost four months. This car was out of commission from four of 2021 all the way up to August of 2021 when I got the car back. So a couple of very important things that they did to this car that you guys really need to understand what's going on. When I had the battery replaced in February of 2020, you figure you just replace the battery and that's it. Well, I talked to the master tech and the shop foreman that worked on this car. He says, you cannot just replace the battery on these cars. You have to replace the battery voltage module. Okay, I says, well, can you please elaborate on that? He says, Phil, the battery is a 12 volt battery, but the electrical system is a 48 volt electrical system. Okay, which is very similar to a lot of EVs and a lot of stuff that's going on. Even BMW is doing that with their hybrid systems. So what ends up happening, you can replace that battery, but if the module is not replaced or if the module is defective and even not programmed to the car properly, you're gonna have constant issues with battery draw issues. I didn't know that. Now it makes a lot of sense to me. So if anybody out there is having electrical problems, word of advice from me that's gone through hell with this car, I'll tell you right now, if you have any electrical problem, mandatory, ask them to replace your battery and the battery module. No questions asked, start with that. Okay, before you do anything, start with that and that may solve a lot of your problems. So the car also sat in the dealership very long because A, couldn't get parts, and B, Alfa Romeo was denying a lot of the warranty repairs because they were done from a prior dealership. So there was collateral damage, there was issues right there, and the Alfa Romeo tech system, this is really embarrassing, and this is what they told me. I'm just repeating what I'm learning, okay? So a lot of you guys are, are just not having good action getting your cars fixed. Well, what I learned, and which I think is totally ridiculous, and it's gonna destroy the brand. If they don't straighten this out, it's gonna destroy Alfa Romeo as a brand. Instead of having a technical team that gets on the phone or visits the dealership, they do tech support via chat. But that is absolutely ridiculous. You can't diagnose and troubleshoot problematic cars through chat. See, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, uh, BMW, they have regional reps and will send field engineers out to the dealership to work on this situation when you have a problematic car. That's usually in the case if you have a big enough dealership. Now, I'm located in the tri-state area, so we have a lot of big stores with BMW, Mercedes, and stuff like that, that they will do that. Now, outside the area, I don't really know, but I just know in my area, that's usually the protocol of what happens. And I've been through it before, and that's why I'm telling you that's exactly how it happens. So that's an issue. So uh, July of 21, that's where they replaced the engine to dash to headlight wiring harness. That's what I showed you under the hood. They also replaced the engine radiator due to a leak. Now there's no more smell, no more smoke. That's a common issue, most likely with the manufacturer of the radiators supplying them to Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo is not making the radiators. They're buying them from Denso or some other company, and that's where the issue is coming into. The HVAC housing and the actuator, that was taken apart and redone. They said that the dealership that did it prior didn't do it right. I have no idea. All I know is that when the first time they did it, the first dealership, water came in the car again and then i got pissed off and then when i went to the other dealership i'm like listen before you go crazy you got to solve the water problem otherwise you're going to be chasing electrical gremlins where the water is going all over the bcm module and causing issues but apparently all my electrical issues weren't caused from the water issue okay the fuel pump just had to be, be sporadic they have problems with fuel pumps on any car whether you have a honda you have a bmw you have an alfa romeo the fuel pumps are just a manufacturing defect and over time they're gonna break. That's just the nature of life, okay? That's what happens. There's no such thing as you put it in once and it lasts you 100 years. It doesn't work that way with anything mechanical or anything electronic. They also replaced my front shocks. Now, I don't know why they replaced it, but they told me there was an electrical short at the connector. I have no idea why, I didn't really care. I just said, fix whatever you gotta fix, I want the car back. That may have been from other people working on the car, or negligence of tools hitting it. I have no idea how that happened, but the front shock wires or the connector was broken and they replaced the shocks. Now, I got the car back from them and I'm driving around for one night, the car broke down again. The DNA mode stopped working and the exhaust valve stopped opening. So the car went back the next day, the exhaust valve solenoid was replacing the warranty. They also modified or, or reinstalled or replaced the front windshield cowl seals. I don't really know, but that's probably for the water issue. And then to conclude to everything that was done under warranty, they reprogrammed every single system in the car with the latest updates from everything, from the engine, the transmission, 
the intelligent braking system, everything is reprogrammed. And ever since that, this car has been just like brand new with no issues whatsoever. They're all asking me like, hey, Phil, why did you put up with all this aggravation dealing with this car? And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm in the service business, you know, automotive service business since the early 90s. And for me to put up with all the aggravation, lack of dealer support, getting towed, not having a loan a car and everything else, that should be a testament of what I think of this car. This car still is one of the best ultra high performance mid-size sports sedans ever created in the world. I don't care about this new BMW, the ugly G80. I don't care, I'm gonna tell you right now. Go watch some of those people that are reviewing. They're actually reviewing the 2021, which is actually a much more refined uh, quadrifolio. They're reviewing that car stock with the G80 and they're still coming back saying the Alfa Romeo has got more character, better front end, and it's a little bit more special. Even though it doesn't have all the tech and bells and whistles, we're talking about they're comparing a stock car to the new BMW, which should have all this innovation and new technology. Come drive my car. I wish one of these big journalists would actually reach out one day and have the opportunity to take this car on the track the way my car is set up. There's no comparison. This car will blow right at G80 all day, every day. There's no question whatsoever. Now, the only other car that I've ever owned in my life, as far as a new, modern, high-performance sports sedan, so far for three years, I usually go through cars because I'm in the car business, okay? So I buy cars, I use them for fun, I also use them for prototyping and developing products that I manufacture and sell. That's just what I've done since the 90s, okay? So the only car that I've ever owned for a long period of time was my 2009 E60 M5 V10 SMG, metallic black, red leather interior, fully optional. That was a $115,000 car and the 2018 Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. So out of all the cars that I've had, I had the E55, the E63, the M3, the M5, I have so many cars, the Jaguar XJRs, the Jaguar S-Types Rs, I had all of these cars. Every high performance today you can think of in the last 20 something years. E39 M5, everything. Uh, even had a Mercedes 124 500E, had them all. So the thing is, if this car wasn't so awesome and wasn't so special, I would have never ever have tolerated not having a loan a car, having the car down for months, and all the BS that I went through with this car. And you have to also understand, and I talked about it when I did the farewell video of the 21, I actually loved the car so much that I went and I spent thousands of dollars on a down payment, took on a loan, paid double in insurance. Believe it or not, the 21 car was double insurance. This car is about 2,200 a year. The red car was about 4,600 a year. No idea why, that's all state, that's exactly the way they quoted it. No idea why, maybe, <laughs> maybe they have wind of the horsepower or maybe they have more data on the car, but I'm actually happier that I got the 18 back because the cheaper insurance. I own the car, there's no payments, I have no loan, car's fixed, I still have uh, about a 12, I think I have 12 months left of factory warranty. Now, this has been scratching my head. If you guys know what's going on, the car market is absolutely on fire right now. You can't get cars, there's shortages. It's just a total mess. So what's going on is a depreciating car like an Alfa Romeo, Maserati, Bentley, and you know, there's a lot of cars that just drop like bullets, okay? These cars, if we were in a different time frame of our history right now, this car would probably be worth like 39 grand, 35 grand. Seriously, I'm being realistic. Right now, I could trade this car in and it, it, trade it in, which is not going to be full retail. I can trade it in for about 58, 59 all day long. Okay. And I actually talked to dealerships recently that wanted to take this car in on trade, either for other higher end cars. I was looking at Audi R8s. I was looking at the Mercedes AMG GTR. I was looking at a Porsche GT4. I was looking at a 718 Spider. I also, two weeks ago, this actually happened. I located a 2021 C8 Corvette black with the darker red full interior, 3LT, car seemed like a really loaded car. So I found the car online and I reached out to the dealership. I'm like, hey, do you guys do trades? They go, yeah. So he gives me a trade-in price towards the vet. I think it was like 57 grand and it would offset the sales tax. So the way it is, if you own an asset like a car and you're gonna buy a more expensive asset, the offset between your trade-in value and the difference in price, you're only gonna pay the sales tax on the difference in price. You're not, so if you buy the car, for 100 grand and your trade-in is 50 grand, you're gonna pay fit, you're gonna pay sales tax on the 50 grand. You're not gonna pay sales tax on 100 grand because you already paid the sales tax on your trade-in. That's just the way it works in most states. I don't know how it is, but I know that's how it is around here. So he calls me up, he says, Phil, let's do the deal. So he sends me the paperwork. 
So he tells me on the phone, he goes, yeah, it's a 3LT, fully loaded, C8 Corvette, and it's a $100,000 car. I'm like, okay. So he was asking a little bit of a markup, and I was willing to pay a little bit of a markup, not a lot of a markup. Uh, so you go online and you go on eBay, you go on Auto Trader, you go look at the auctions at Meekum and Barrett Jackson, and these C8 Corvettes are freaking trading for 130 grand. And I'm like scratching my head, like I understand, you know, we're in a little bit of a crisis now. People are kind of like freaking out, you know, making money and they just want to spend money on, and buy new cars. But I'm not paying 130 grand for a C8 Corvette. I'm sorry, maybe for the Z06 I would, but not for the standard C8. So he sends me over to paperwork and I'm looking at the numbers. I'm like, what is this guy out of his mind? So the MSRP on the car, it wasn't even close to 100 grand. It was 82 grand. So after now that I find out the truth about the MSRP, he tells me it's 82 grand, not 100 grand. I say to myself, this son of a bitch is trying to mark up the car $33,000. I said to myself, there's no freaking way that I'm going to pay a $33,000 ADM on any car. Maybe if I was like a jackpot lottery winner, I would probably do it. But no, I'm just a hardworking class individual and I am not paying that much for any car as far as a, as, as far as a markup. So that, that deal was dead. Uh, then if you look at the problem, there's, there's just no cars in the market. There's nothing on the market. So I'm at the situation where a lot of you guys that contact me, you know, you want to sell your quadrifolio because the market is at, at its peak. I get it. But you have to understand you're not going to be able to really replace this car that easily because there's not a lot of cars out there. There, there's just no inventory. Uh, the G80 M3s would be uh, probably the closest competitor to this, but it's higher priced. It's going to cost you a lot more money if you decide to lease or finance it right now. Uh, so there's not a lot of options out there. Now, a couple of months ago when my car was in the shop, I did another deal. I was going to trade this car for an awesome avocado green Audi R8 coupe, okay? It was lowered, it had BBS forged wheels, it had a full exhaust, it was, it was awesome. This car was freaking awesome. The dealership, an independent dealership, we will take your Alphon trade. Now, how the hell am I gonna trade the car when it's in a million pieces at the dealership for months? So it was just bad timing. And it's so funny because I linked up with that guy that bought that car through Instagram and uh, he's happy as hell that he actually found it. But I was actually a serious player to buy that Audi R8. I mean, it's a NAV10, it was the, it was a higher performance model. Uh, the color combo was super rare. It, it had mods on it that I loved. It, it, the price was right, the trade-in made sense, except everything, in, everything with this 2018 was in such limbo that I was reluctant to do anything further. So the only thing that I did do, I bought the 21 QV because of the deal that I made with Alfa Romeo internally. Uh, and look what happened. I ended up selling the 21. This is real world ownership. I don't know if there's anybody out there on the internet that's taking you along for the ride every step of the way from the good times, the bad times, the maintenance, the detailing, the modifications. This is what I'm trying to do on the channel and I love doing it. I love this car so much. The problem is now three years into it, I'm not getting bored with this car. I think if I didn't have social media and the brand Auto Fanatic, I don't think I would care. I would just keep this car another couple of years and put an extended warranty on it. But I, I don't know what other kind of content I cre could create for you guys. If anybody out there has suggestions, contact me. Let me know what you would like to see on this car because I'm not going to go crazy modifying the engine. I'm just not doing it. It's too risky with the dealer network, and I'm, I'm terrified to even go down this road again where the car is going to become an unreliable mess for seven months because it gets in the hands of the wrong technicians. That's my fear. So right now, the car is good. I don't want to mess with it. I know if I mess with it, it's going to bite me in the ass and you're not going to see the car anymore on the channel. That's unfortunately what's going to happen. But considering that everything that I would replace this car with or, or consider replacing with, I can't attain. No matter what I do, just can't get it. Can't get the AMG GTR. I can't get a Ferrari Roma. They told me two plus year wait for that. I, I saw the guy oh, over the weekend. That's not happening. That's an awesome car. And that would be a really awesome replacement for this car. It really would be. That would be a very practical Ferrari that I could drive daily. But you can't get the car. Uh, you can't get the new GT3 Porsche, whether you want the Touring or the Standard. You can't get it. Uh, and if you do get it, they want 60000 over sticker. It's stupid. Financially, stupid, stupid, stupid. I'm not doing it. Uh, same thing for the Corvette. They want too much money over sticker. Now, 
just because I want to create new content and I want to have a new automotive experience to share with not only myself and my friends, but all you guys that watch my channel. I just want something new. I can't keep buying cars and adding more cars. It's just too expensive. I have nowhere to keep them and it just doesn't make any sense. Plus, we're in this process of downsizing and relocating out of the area. So I don't want to have more cars to sell off and transport and all that. We're selling off a lot of stuff right now as far as the cars go, all the cars that you see on the channel. So unfortunately, you know, months ago, there were some options as far as me replacing this car. At the present time, October of 2021, the options are limited to none. I really think these cars are so damn awesome. They're so special. We're never, ever going to experience these cars again. And I'm going to be honest with you. Even though I don't have a brand new car to talk about on the channel, I'm still fortunate and I'm happy every day that I get into this car because it puts a smile on my face, okay? There's not many cars that could do that. The car puts a smile on my face every single day that I'm in it, and it's running good. I have no issues with it. If there's any advice I could give you one-on-one -on -one is don't hesitate to buy one of these cars. Buy it with a factory warranty, okay? I don't trust the aftermarket warranties. Just buy it with a factory warranty. If you could get one, if you could find one, go for it. If you could find one spec'd out like mine, you better jump on it quick because these cars are going to be gone, especially with the carbon fiber seats and the carbon package. You're just not going to find them. I think the biggest issue with Alfa Romeo is not Alfa Romeo itself. I think it's FCA. I think it's Stellantis. Stellantis is running the show. And with the limited support that they're giving to dealerships and customers, that is going to plummet and destroy Alfa Romeo as a brand. And listen, listen to me. Alfa Romeo has two products, a Giulia and a Stelvio. BMW has like 15 products. Mercedes has another 20-some products. So, you know, this is such a small niche brand. And you would think that they want to do whatever they can to kind of keep this brand alive. But all Alfa Romeo, FCA, and Stellantis care about in the United States is I think they're focusing more on the Maserati brand because the Maserati has more of a U.S. presence. And now they're revamping all those models. That's why we didn't get the 8C. Uh, that's why that turned into the Maserati MC20 and all of that stuff right there. So I don't think they care. I think they brought it back uh, and they tried and, and they're, they're, they just don't have the management force and the right team running the show. And unfortunately, it's going to go to the wayside. We're, we're, it's just going to happen. I see it already. I see what's going on. I hear from you guys all over the world, whether you're in London whether you're in you know, Australia, whether you're in, in Germany, uh, Poland, Ukraine. All, I talk to people everywhere in the United States, Canada. Everybody's having problems with the dealer network and the support. So what's that doing? It's going to piss that person off to the point where they're going to cut their losses, walk away, and never look back. Unfortunately, I'm too much of an enthusiast and a diehard passion head when it comes to cars that I dealt with seven months of absolute nonsense and ball breaking because I love these cars so much, okay? Because, you know, these cars are a little bit more, you know, than just owning, oh, I got a cool car. To me, it's my outlet. It's my therapy. It's my expression and my enthusiasm of what I do every day with cars. I love it. So if you take something that I really love out of my life, I'm going to be very, very unhappy. And I'll do whatever I can to keep something that brings me joy and happiness and pleasure. I will actually sacrifice to hold on to that in my life. FYI, a little bit of a world, world life advice. I hope this video comes off clear. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to get back in. I'm going to drive the car. I'm going to go have lunch. I'm going to take the long way to where I got to go because I love driving this car every day. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to the Auto Fanatic channel. There's going to be more content on this car, more products I'm going to make. Visit the Auto Fanatic web shop. I'm going to update the blog on the website. And I will see you guys in the next video soon. Hang in there. Don't be stressed out if your car is giving you problems. If you guys need help and support, email me. My advice could possibly help you out. If not, if you want to pull the plug and walk away, you know, the choice is up to you. But I think right now you're going to be really limited to what you can get. So thanks for watching. Get out there, enjoy your cars, and I'll see you on the next one soon.